The coalition of northern groups attacks southern governors, saying its resolutions are a conspiracy against the north. And a federal high court vindicates Kemi Adoshun, says the ex-minister was ineligible for NYSC. This is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anna Cole. The coalition of northern groups, CNG, has responded to the statement by the southern governors that the next president should come from the southern region. It said while the north may not be opposed to the democratic transfer of power to any competent person uh, from any section of the country, the north will not support power moving to zones of those who are using threats, violence and falsehood as a means of political power. The Northern Coalition, in a statement signed by its spokesperson, Abdulaziz Suleiman, noted that, and I quote, the gang up against the North to force a regional shift of the presidency in 2023 is clearly undemocratic. Well, joining us to have this conversation is Eugene Abels, executive of Extra Step. He, and also we have Shehu Musa Gabam. He is the national secretary of the Social Democratic Party, SDP. And also joining us is Achike Chude. He is a public affairs analyst. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to start with you, Mr. Gabam, because obviously um, this is um, the, a reaction coming uh, from the Northern Coalition. Uh, apparently, after the Southern governors uh, met and um, released a communique. So um, let's look at the first thing. They're accusing um, the Southern governors of shielding felons, um, arsonists, uh, and mass atrocity perpetrators in the midst, uh, in, in their midst, by challenging. Uh, the prerogative of the federal government to enforce law and order in all parts of the country. What are your thoughts on this statement? Well, first and foremost, uh, every group have the right to react to uh, what the governors have said to the conspiracy of the of the southern government. And I want to say that this is not the first time such meetings uh, have been taking place. Politically speaking, it is uh, undemocratic. We have tried it in 1999, and, I, and I wonder, I'm one of those who went to court to stop zoning and allow every citizen of Nigeria who is competent, who is eligible, to contest for any office in Nigeria. And of course, the, the court granted that uh, you cannot discriminate against anybody. It's a Supreme Court judge. And the behavior and the, the way and the manner the, the governors have displayed their decision is sound as if we are in a military junta, and they behave as if they are military administrators. Politics is about consultations. It's about it's an internal affairs of political parties to decide what to zone or what not to zone. It's about consultation. It's about mediation. It's about giving everybody a sense of respect and a sense of understanding. But the way and the manner the issues have been coming out is clear that the governors are the problem of Nigeria. Virtually all of them are responsible for what is going on. The governors are responsible for creating uh, a lot of discrimination in their own states. They are responsible for some of the anarchies that are taking place in their own states. They are responsible for defunding local government, killing local government in their own states. They are responsible for defunding state assembly, defunding state judiciary. They are equally responsible for most of the segregations and uh, crisis uh, you, 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 all over the country. So for me, the biggest challenge that they have is, 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 is the governance of Nigeria as a whole, not just the southern governance. But like I have said, democracy is about consultation. And it is not the governor that are going to cast their votes. It's that every Nigerian have it, it's not possible, it cannot work, it's not going to work. In 1999, to which I was a founding member of PDP, we agreed by consensus, you know, that the power should shift to the southwest in order to appease the issue of June 12. It was a consensus decision. It wasn't for us on anybody. And uh, for, for, for the governors that who, were, who went through the process of election, they were democratically elected, segregated against citizens of Nigeria that are domiciling in their own state, denied them certain privilege, you know, uh, you know as, as Nigerians in their own state. Let me, let me just come in there. Um, 
the issue of zoning is not just um, a southern issue. Obviously, There's been zoning in different political parties. I don't know if you can still hear me, but I think we lost you for a second there. Um, I'm happy. Great. Um, the issue of zoning is not a thing that has, you know, just crop crept up upon us. We've heard of zonings over and over again. Um, and, and why should the, the North, Northern Coalition feel that the fact that the South is asking for power to come to it is a gang up against the North? Why would that feeling come about in any way? The North has had um, power zone to it over and over again. So why would it be a problem? And I'm just asking out of curiosity why this would be like it is a gang up of sorts against the North. It's simply because the language they used was wrong. They used a very wrong language of communicating their community or their resolutions. You cannot run anybody out in the democracy. You have to dialogue it out. It's by discussion. It's by understanding. But when you use a very vulgarous language on people, they have the right... What to exactly is this vulgarous language, to borrow problems. your words? What exactly is the word? What is the thing that is um, ab abhorrent to you and people who, uh, the people in the Northern Coalition that you think um, is what would make it sound like a gang up? It, it's very simple. Like, like I have said, we have, we have practiced zoning by consensus or by understanding. It wasn't imposed on anybody. So for the governors who were elected, and for, for, your, own, for, for your own knowledge, this government, PGP and the APC, both of them belong to a political party. They need to parties, consult within their political parties, have a consensus within their political parties. And then once and their parties agreed, they will zone this thing to, to, to south as a whole or to the southwest or to the southeast, or to the south-south. What is remaining is lobby. You know, orders to agree to support what they, their parties have agreed. But you cannot say it as if you are going to enforce it at all costs. There must be a democratic language of communicating the issues. There are a lot of issues that are involved. I've not read through all what the Northern Coalition have said. I'm, 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 I'm talking to you as a party man, as, as a politician who have the right to exercise my franchise, and nobody can deny me from doing that. In, in, in PDP, like I said, it was a consensus thing to zone it to the, to the Southwest, to be specific, in 1999. And there was no much issue on that. All the right. governors feel that they can impose their will on, 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 on others, if political parties. They have not worked within their own party internally. They are coming up with language and calling it most and other things. There cannot be most, and there will never be most. Where the democracy have come to stay. Interesting. So you would rather that the governor say, we would like for power to be zoned to the south, instead of saying power must be zoned to the south. So it's, it's a, it, is this an issue of semantics? Or maybe, uh, maybe what, what you think that feathers have been ruffled because of the word must? Language at all times is a call. When you like proper way of communicating, particularly generate issues, it generate debate, it generate unnecessary uh, controversy. Like I said, the governors were elected. Even in their states, as I'm talking to you, were denied from minorities in their states to vie for governorship within their own states. It's about reaching out to their own political party, discuss, agree within their own political parties, lobby that look this time around, doesn't seem to be zoned to a particular zone or to the whole of the South. If you zone okay. it to the whole of the South, it's left for the whole of the South to decide which zone in the whole of the South should take the presidency, either the Southwest or South Southeast or South South. That is the way it is. But okay. you cannot use the wrong language and think of taking people or you will eliminate people out at all costs. It has never happened and it will not happen. Okay, let me go to Eugene. Eugene, can you please unmute your mic so that you can answer me? Um, I'm going to go again to what the coalition said, um, and I'd, I'd like to quote them. They say, there has been a gang up against the North, uh, in particular, to force a regional shift uh, of the presidency in 2023 by whatever means and tactics. 
So I want to ask you, Eugene, because you must have seen the communique that was released by the Southern Governors. What exactly is wrong with the demand for zoning to uh, the South by these governors? Is this an issue of semantics again, just like um, Shehu has said? Eugene. Um, well, can... thank you for having me. And um, yes, it's all politics. And the season, the, the festivities of politicking has begun. And even the reaction of the coalition of Northern groups, it's also part of the dance. Everybody is seeking for atten attention and for relevance. In our constitution, the, 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 the principle of rotation is a shrine in the concept of federal, in a federal character, where the, 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 we try, even in an imperfect situation, to try to reach everybody. So all the drama you're seeing and hearing are typical of our traditions in the way we play politics. So I don't think anybody should lose any sleep about it. And um, I listened to my brother, Sheo, and the Sheo is saying the language they used is uh, it's unbecoming. He's also said that it's a gang up. Politics is about interest. While the Southern governors are making that statement, Governor Zulun is meeting with Tinibu. It's all about interest. Even uh, my brother here, Shil, is also his utterances is also designed to get attention to him. So I don't think we should lose sleep about it. I don't think they used any language that has not been used before. It's about interest, and the aggregation of interest begins from the family to the south to regions and so on. This is how we play politics. The political parties have also enshrined it even in an unwritten form, whereby they ensure that we never have a Muslim Muslim ticket or a Christian Christian ticket, or do two candidates do not come from one part of the geopolitical divide of our nation. So, my dear, my colleagues and brethren here, I don't think we should lose any sleep about this. Okay. Um, I think for me, what should I should expect in this time, irrespective of um, colors or uh, ethnicity, I should expect people trying to outdo performance like the likes of Zulum, I should expect people to come forth to begin to show their credentials of the stuff they've made with, made of, not by virtue of qualification, by virtue of their accomplishments over the years on the existence in this political Nigeria. Please, it's not important for now. Let me come to you, Achike, uh, Achike Chudi. Um, the Northern Group said, and I quote, um, the governor's resolutions on 2023 has expressed a deliberate attempt to impose a contentious system of rotational presidency aimed at achieving dubious political goals to weaken the North, underline the word weaken. So um, how does power rotation or uh, zoning amount to weakening the North? Can the same be said about the North because they're in, the, in power right now? Is the South weak because we have a Norsena in power? Um, help me make it make sense. It, it's a good question you're asking because that is the presupposition. Unless uh, unless it is going to be said that because uh, the, the arrangement that uh, favored the, the president uh, in 2015 and 2019 was not imposed, was as a result of consensus, therefore it did not weaken the South. But the reality is that the entire Nigerian state has been weakened by the presidency of, uh, you know, um, uh, President uh, uh, Muhammad Buhari, and not just him, even beyond him, because you ask yourself, oh, after 60 years of independence, what have we got going for us in this country? The country is, 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 the country is in shambles. The, there is insecurity everywhere. The state has lost the ability to protect itself, neither can it protect its citizens. Students are being kidnapped everywhere. You know, so if that is not a weakening of the Nigerian state, entirely, whether north and south. I don't know what else is weakening. And so we must understand even the concept of political power. What is the basis of ascension to political power in this country or in any country? That the primary duty and responsibility of the state, of, of the state is the protection of, 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 of the lives of the people and the, and the improvement on the welfare of the people. And so when you have a political system that neither does all of these things and instead weakens the entire structure, you know, which the Nigerian Federation stands, then that is a system itself that has to be gotten rid of. That, that, let us even stop at that. But I think beyond this is the fact that the worry of the of, of uh, the Northern Coalition, because again, when you talk about Northern, Northern Coalition, it's even contentious. 
Is it Northern Coalition of the entire, you know, uh, uh, 19 states in the North? You must address the critical contradictions in the Nigerian state that has led us to where we are. You, you, you know, uh, uh, I, I, but I think beyond that, what is even worrying is the fact, I, I, I suspect, that for the first time, the, the Southern governors are meeting, doing what their Northern counterparts have done over the years and that people were very satisfied with. People did not have any issue with that because it's about politics, it's about power. It, you know, it's, uh, sometimes it's a game of number also. You know, and so the South met the very first time and it became a problem. Now they have met again and yet it is still a problem. And, uh, you, you know, so the, the, I do not think that there is an attempt to impose because ultimately when you say the Northern governors want to impose, how are they going to impose? They are only going to do whatever they are going to do through a political process. You have the national, you know, uh, 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 the independent national electoral commission that has been mandated by law to conduct elections. And so when the Northern governors, when, I mean, when, 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 when this coalition group says they want to impose, there is no good, there is no way they are going to, but so they, they can, do any such imposition. So I agree with my friend. Ultimately, you know, it is about politics. But beyond that, is that we need to begin to look at how we can build a country that works. We, 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 it is not, this is not about, you know, the North or about the South. The Nigerian state in its entirety is completely very weak. And so if we want to make that the argument about weakness and the rest, we could say, for instance, people have often talked about the fact that, 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 that we do not need and we're not going to allow a certain presidency. Do we, are we going to say that that is an attempt to force anybody, uh, you, you know, to ensure that the presidency remains in the north? We've had that. Even the northern, you know, elders at the time made that statement that power is not going to go to the south. If that is part of the negotiation, you know, process. And but uh, me, were two other things I want to say. Is 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 the the, the the wonderful thing about even what is going on is that you have governors from both sides of the divide, from both political parties. The party in power today, that is the APC, and, and, the, dumb, and, the, and the major opposition party, that is the PDP, all singing the same tune. So that tells you that there must be something fundamental if governors of the APC cannot sit down with their own party and they, and they say, look, let us have, you know, a, 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 you know, a certain governor, I mean, sorry, a certain president this time around. Mm -hmm. That means that there is a dysfunctionality within the, the APC itself. And besides, zoning is not an imposition. Zoning is something that has, uh, that has been agreed on, even though it is not constitutional. But I think Eugene, in a way, touched it indirectly when he talks about the essence of federal character. Mm -hmm. You understand? So it's also, in a way, in a way, indirectly, you know, about power, you know, uh, uh, presidential power, touching every part of this country. That is the only, okay. only way you can have some okay. level of harmony, you know, within uh, the polity. So zoning is, is something that was already agreed through collective bargaining by the political elites in this country. And so it is a given that once a region of this country has excised power, it must go to back to the other re region. Let but me, for let me, me, ultimately, a bit, I, I round up by saying, what kind of power are they exercising? Is it power that is being exercised on behalf of the Nigerian people, or is it power that has laid the Nigerian state prostrate today, like what we have under the present administration of General Muhammad Buhari? Let me go back to uh, Mr. Shea Ugabam. Um, just to you know, come from where um, Achike Chude is coming from, um, do you think that maybe the reason why the governors in the South seem to be in alliance, because like you said earlier on, they're both from the platforms of the PDP and the APC, but then they are all in consonance agreeing on a particular thing. Do you think that maybe the reason why they're doing this is because there have been several agitations. We've seen non-state actors like Kanu, um, we've seen non-state uh, actors like Igboho rise up and they're all f speaking um, in almost the same voice. They're all agitating because, in quote, they think that they've been got, getting the short end of the stick in terms of being carried along. Do you think that maybe that's why the governors are saying, maybe we should have a southern governor. Maybe we want to appease our people. Let's see what, how good a southern governor. And then let's not forget, it's a southern governor. It will now behove on the parties to decide whether we will be from the, you know, the southwest or the south-south or the southeast. But then they're asking for a southern government president, I beg your pardon. So again, could it be because of the agitations and that maybe they want to, you know, one way or the other pacify the people in their regions? Well, first of all, let me say that 
But all of us are talking about politics. And politics is tied to it. What he's talking about is defined by the regional interest, ethnic interest, and so on and so forth. Number two, against agitation, absolutely. What agitation build a nation, make it stronger, and of course, why are problematics to be corrected? So there's nothing wrong. The only problem with agitation is you have gone into a, to lead into, you know, taking life of natural damage and so on and so forth. But if people can agitate on something that is good for the country, good for their people, there's nothing wrong with it. So I'm not agitating, absolutely. But what I'm saying is that in a democratic where people have the right air their views. People have the right that are subject to discussions and agreement and disagreement. The greater wisdom would prevail. What national interest? What do we do to balance issues that deal with uh, or to change a particular region? There's no part of this country or part of region that have not been shortchanged in one way or the other. Every region has its own shortfall. So what for the governors who are elected and supposedly that they, they're supposed to think better than other people because they are governing millions of people in their own state. So their ability to rationalize issues that are psychologically very touching and appealing is very key. When you see a governor talking outside the normal, when you see a in what he says in the public domain completely. It affects the stability of the system completely. Several that some of these governors are the worst governors to office. They are very unremorseful, very undiplomatic. They don't know how to challenge their issues. So you seem to have a problem with the governors. You're not you seem not to necessarily um, be addressing what the Northern Coalition is saying. You just feel that the governors no, are the problem of this not, country. Not them could. Uh, but, but then, if the people that you think are the problem of the country are in their own way, I mean, they might think that they're wise, of course, uh, and they say that, well, let's do this to appease our people, because you're saying they're the problem. Now they're saying, this is a solution that we're thinking of, and we think that this will help solve the problems that we're facing as a country. But you seem to particularly say these governors are a problem. Do, do you really have a problem with the governors? I'm just curious. No, 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 no. See, we are in the, in the nation. And when prominent issues we are having today is because the, one of the analysts have said it completely and comprehensive. Affected us, all of us as the people, because they are misgovernance. And if you don't address misgovernance, you cannot address issues of agitation and so on and so forth. But because there is misgovernance from government down to the, 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 the community level, there are consequences. These are the consequences we are talking about. If during Shagari, the chief, there's a utilization of power, the sense of belonging. Things were balanced. You have not had this problem that you have today. So let me ask but you, the issue of banditry that we have, is it the governors of the South that have, or the Southwest that have caused the no, issue of banditry? No, the issue of kidnappings that we're facing as a country, is it the governors that are responsible? I just need you to help me answer that. All of the problems that we're facing now, aside from the issue of misgovernance, but I want to tie it to that, is that, is it the governors that are responsible for all of the banditry, the killings, Boko Haram, is it the governors? Yes, they, they, they are, they are. Please give me examples, and can you name these governors that you think are responsible for banditry, for kidnapping, for Boko Haram? You should listen to me. I've been in government. I, yeah, I just need not, names. I just need names, facts. I, just, yes. just give me that information, please. Foreign perspectives. Even the Boko Haram politically motivated, there's investigation to that effect. People feel that they were not carried along. They started assembling, started threatening the state, and the governors were not doing anything. And the chief security officers of the state, and all the crimes happen in the state where you have elected governors. So if that responsibility from a governor, you know, to do the needful, he abdicated his job in the state. Some dollars, 
who do blame? Yes, President Buhari is the president and commander in chief, but also the constitution empower governors to ensure peace in their respective states. Do the governors they command the police? Their, do the governors command the army, the, the navy? Do they have the power to do that? Okay. So you cannot exonerate a governor when you are looking for a solution to a very peaceful society where law and order, where decency, employment and order uh, should, should take place. What I'm saying is they take the large bulk of the blame, but okay. also the governors must take responsibility in destabilizing oh. the politics. Okay. They are responsible for it. All right, I need to quickly go to um, Eugene and Achike before we wrap this up. So um, I'll go to you, Eugene. The concept of one Nigeria means that Whatever, were, whatever choices we're making, whatever, wherever power decides to go, or if there had been an agreement that, you know, this time it would go, in 2021 it would go to this person, and in 2023 it would go to that person. That's the idea of the federal character and the one Nigeria. But that concept, that idea, does it really hold water in this country? Yeah. Now, the concept of one Nigeria, yeah, the concept of one Nigeria, uh, it's a carryover of um, the civil war whereby we believe that um, we must remain united as a nation. It's a nation of over 450 ethnic nationalities, and um, there's nothing wrong in it. Recently, we've seen the Euro 2021 going on, Euro 2020 going on, and a particular nation, United Nation, United Kingdom, while others are coming with one team, one technical crew and so on, they came with three teams, Three technical, everything they came with three, United Kingdom. So everything can be used positively the way you want. It depends on how you apply it. Now, for us, we like to mount, um, we not like to mount cliches, one Nigeria, North divide, South divide. Now the question is this, prior to now, we had a Southern governor. Have we done an assessment? What were the benefits to the nation, particularly Southern the Southern people? Mm -hmm. If we bring it up not now, yes please. There's, yes. there's a northern president. I would like expect that um, we should begin to do a cost-benefit analysis of what have come, what has been the exceptional indices or the uh, growth or development indices or, or, or benefits that have accrued to the north. Is the north more cohesive? But the north is more divided than it used to be, despite that power has resided within the past six years. So these cliches are. Uh, the politicians will keep inventing them. But in real, when we place them side by side against performance indices, key performance indices, they amount to nothing. I think it's inconsequential for a group of adults to begin to talk about what a group of people who have a common interest have decided to speak about. That look, we need to have the bread power back to the South. There's nothing wrong with it. I think we are wasting very important time. now. We need to begin to have this, the conversations about, do we need to allow these politicians to lead the narrative? They lead it and they lead it negatively. If maybe the elections are over, if maybe candidates are over, all of this will fizzle away. And the populace will have been led by the nose. We cannot continue to be allowed, allow these people to miss. They're misleading us. It's all bobo, bobo juice, no, no substance. Nobody is okay. discussing any form of substance. In 1982, when I was in university, the concept of development was just, a, was just a sentence. You could define it with a sentence. Today, the concept of development, sustainable as we added to it, it's a whole paragraph. That's where the world is. We Education. Can, we, we can do a whole a show on it, I'm guessing. Yes, and today, we, children in the North can't even go to school. And four or four, yeah, we're discussing this because people are uh, hitting up the policy with very inflammatory statements. Politics is about interest. Okay. Within okay. marriage, there's politics. Within siblings, there's politics. Within the family, there's politics. Interest must be aggregated. Okay. All right. Finally, Achike, um, just to follow up on what Eugene has said, going forward, how do we chart the cost for the conversations? How do we change the narrative? Because that politics, like he has said, is you know about interest, and everybody does have an interest. But the lowest interest, or the interest that is um, the least important or least prioritized, is the interest of the people. How do we bring that back up to the top of the priority list? In closing, you know where I would disagree with uh, Eugene is when he says that um, ultimately, at the end of the day, after the elections, the politicians go back 
you know, to doing what they are used to doing and all that. But you see, we do not understand that there's a greater sense of urgency in this country than we have ever had, apart from the period of the civil war, leading to the civil war and, you know, during the civil war years. Nigeria is in a debt-like situation, in a debt-like grip today. The existence of the Nigerian Federation is threatened. And if you look at if you if you look at what uh, I think uh, the Council of State of, of State you know Council of Foreign Relations in the United States said some time ago that Nigeria was once a weak state now Nigeria is a failed state. So you have in the order of you know a status of states at, you know in the world today, you have a strong state, you have you know uh, you have a weak state uh, you know somewhere along the line, and then you have a collapsed state. Uh, you, you know, maybe you have, a fault, you have a collapsed state. Nigeria is, an, is a weak state today. And that's why I said we can neither defend ourselves nor defend the, the state can neither defend itself or dis, defend its people. And so you have, for instance, a United Nations uh, um, a survey recently indicated that in the Northeast alone, about 350,000 people had died. You are not just talking about the number of people in the Northwest. So and then all the crisis that's going on in the in the in the south of this country, we cannot afford to delay anymore because delay time is not on our side. Okay. Every, every almost anybody you talk to will tell you today uh, that there is a you know we are in a state of fear and uncertainty. Nobody knows what is going to happen. There was once a Somalia, and we must understand that there was once a Rwanda before the genocide. It is situations such as this that led. To, to the crisis of, I mean, of the misgovernance we saw in Somalia that eventually made Somalia a no man's land up to today. You know, then we, of course we know what happened in, 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 in uh, Rwanda. In a space of 90 days, about a million people had died, about 10,000 people on a daily basis. This is the level that we are in. So this is not just about North and South or East and West. It's about humanity, our humanity. And it's about our corporate existence as a country. And that the political class, unfortunately, has failed this country badly, especially the government at the center. All of these things that we are talking about today, this, the, the, the statements, the rhetoric by the southern governors, as well as the response by the northern coalition that we are talking about, is all, all, is all as a result of the unprecedented level of okay. incompetence in governance that has taken place in the past six years. We have never been so divided. Look, it is not as if past presidents of this country did not have their fault clients. But what has happened is that, I mean, there was, they always operated at, 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 there was always a limit to how they did things, either in terms of appointment, in terms of approach to governance. Unfortunately, it's like the break system has been removed from this government and they have gone all out. It doesn't matter. And so there is so much fear, there's so much distrust. Okay. One ethnic group against the other ethnic group. And so in such an unprecedented manner, the North and the South, all of them, it's not as if they did not exist for a long time, but I said it was managed. Just today, I read in the papers that the, the former governor of Kaduna State, Tabuba Omar, blamed the present occupier of office in Abuja of mismanaging the diversity of this country. This is why we're, this is why the certain governors are making well, this we statement. Need to go. So you must provide the context All under right. which this, this, this statement was made by the certain governors. All right. Well, Achike Chude uh, is a public affairs analyst. Shehu Musa Gabam is the National Secretary of the Social Democratic Party, SDP. And Eugene Abels is the, an executive of Extra Step. Thank you, gentlemen, for being part of this conversation. Thank you. All right. Well, we'll take a short break, and when we come back, apparently uh, the federal court uh, had vindicated uh, former Minister of Finance, Kemi Adelshun. We'll get to find out the details after this break. <laughs>